Hi there, Nikki here and welcome to another automation video. So in this video, I'm going to uh, introduce Jinja Macros. It's a continuation of my uh, previous video on custom filter plugins. So in that video, I used the TTP module to take a show run policy map quas configuration, pass it through a template in order to create structured uh, quas data. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to interrogate that structured data in order to report on the bandwidth that's assigned to each class. But in a show policy map, uh, the bandwidth could be um, presented in kilobits per second, in some instances in bits, bits per second, in others, and as, as a percentage with the, with the percent keyword. Uh, so what my macro is going to do is it's going to convert all of those values into bits per second so that we can we can do a comparison easily in our report which will be a comma separated file that we can um, open up in excel but first i'm just going to do a very quick recap on what i went through in the previous video so in the previous video i've got uh, two policy maps on each router a parent that shapes to um, a value in bits per second and a child map that um, assigns the bandwidth values either using the percent keyword or an actual value which is in kilobits per second and then the variables that i want to create is class underscore name which is the policy map name which be child or parent the queue type which will um, be priority for low latency queuing or bandwidth for weight of fair queuing the bandwidth mode which is going to be how the bandwidth is calculated on the class. So it's going to either be percent or it's going to be blank. And when it's blank, I just set it to default. And then finally, the class bandwidth, which is going to be that percent, percent value or kilobits per second. Uh, and if we just have a look at uh, how that looks in my template. So I created a template for the parent and the child so you can see in the child class i create i'm going to create a structured data a structure that, that's called quas underscore class and then the class i put double brace double curly brackets around my variable name which is going to be class name and then i create my other classes so uh, the next um variable is q type which will be either priority or bandwidth and I set the default to bandwidth which will uh, cover the default class which doesn't have bandwidth um, configured on it and then when I'm calculating bandwidth mode I put that value which is either going to be percent 30 or just a number if it's kilobits per second I pass that through into a macro called check if percent and that macro creates a list and splits the, 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 the past data based on, um, on a comma separation. And if I find percent in that keyword um, or in that list, um, or sorry, in the data passed in, then I return uh, element zero of the list, which is, uh, which is going to be a percent for bandwidth mode. And then I set the class bandwidth to be the um, second element of the list which will be say 30 for the percentage if i don't find percent in in the past in data then i uh, i set the bandwidth mode to be bandwidth and then the class uh, bandwidth is to the only element in that list which might be 3000 for for kilobits per second and then uh, finally i i set a default of remaining underscore bandwidth which will cover the default class and also I have a random detect. And then very quickly, the filter plugins um, has a, a class that um, we call with the quas keyword and we, we pass the policy map in and uh, we, we also pass in the, the, uh, the template file in order to get our structured data. So, if you uh, review the previous video, you'll, you'll see exactly what um, this uh, uh, Python class is doing. And then I have a playbook where I call all of this, which is uh, quasplay.yaml. Uh, and 
I call, I, I, do, I, uh, I run my two show run commands, save them as a variable, pass them into my custom filter plugin, and I display those variables. So if we just run that quickly, just to review what the structured data looks like. And uh, we do our show run commands for parent and child. We um, then we call our filter plugin that uses TTP. And then we display our variable, which is going to give us the structured data. So we can see a child map here uh, with the group name um, quas underscore class and on our variables Q type priority class name gold. Um, it's using bandwidth. So the 30,000 refers to kilobits per second, etc. So now I want to create a, a template. And I'm going to save um, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to use the, the, the template module to create my report, which is, is comma separated, and I'm going to have a header on it. So that's going to be saved in my output directory. So uh, firstly, in my output directory, I've created a file called aaa-header.csv, and I, I, I call it aaa so that it will be the, it'll be the first file in my, in my report. And I'm just setting the headers uh, of my report so I'm gonna in my Jinja template I'm gonna um, the first column in my Excel spreadsheet is going to be router then policy map uh, the class map the Q type and the bandwidth which will be in bits per second so if we have a look at my quas template where I will use macros I've just called a quas report dot j2 and this is where I'm going to iterate through the, the quas class and create my comma separated file and call the, uh, call the macro. So firstly, the first thing I'm doing is um, the parent map. So the first value is my inventory underscore host name, which is the, the Ansible um, default um, variable for the host name, the router host name. Then I call the parent map. Um, uh, or rather this, this parent map here is just a, is just a uh, it's not calling a variable I'm just I'm, I, I'm just um, putting that in in the second place and then I call the parent map uh, structured data and um, this is for the class name which is uh, element zero of the the list uh, quas class and class name is is the first um, calling that I do and then the queue type is the second one where I declare um, default bandwidth if it's not uh, in the output and then finally the class bandwidth and then um, I, I begin my calculations so I will want to calculate the default bandwidth so even if you do a show policy map interface of an interface that has a policy, a service policy configuration, uh, you will see the bandwidths um, for each of your classes. So if you use priority percent 10, it will actually show you what that is in, in um, kilobits per second. But the class default never shows you what the bandwidth is. It's always the remaining bandwidth. So what I'm doing here is I am creating a variable and setting it to zero. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna capture the bandwidth of each of my classes, add those bandwidths up, and then subtract that from my parent class bandwidth to work out what the class default bandwidth is. But by default, uh, if you declare a variable with uh, the set command in Jinja inside a for loop, it's only it's got local significance, so you can't then access it outside the loop. And um, the way if you do need to do that, the way to do that is to create a namespace object and that allows the propagating of that variable value um, outside of your for loop. And the way to do that is, uh, is here, uh, I create a variable called ns and then I set it as namespace and then in brackets, 
and the, the variable name so I'm just calling it default bandwidth so it's referring to the default class and setting it uh, to zero and then I am interrogating my child map quas class so I'm going to loop through that so it's a single element class with dictionaries inside of inside of the uh, class so it's child map dot zero for the first element and uh, a quas class and then uh, I have a conditional if statement and I'm saying that if this isn't the class default if the class name is not class default then I'm going to do uh, one particular um, calling of, of a macro and similar to the parent class uh, I first uh, the first position of my report is going to be the infantry, infantry underscore host name then I ma manually set the uh, policy map here to child map and then I call uh, the class name which is uh, uh, in my for loop I'm I'm referring to quas underscore uh, conf and now I'm inside of uh, my quas class so it's quas underscore conf dot class name and then the same for q type and then for the bandwidth I'm calling my map macro uh, calc underscore bandwidth and I'm passing into it the parent map bandwidth the uh, child map bandwidth mode and the child map um, bandwidth which will be either kilobits per second or 30 40 for the, for the percent value whatever and then up here is where I declare my macro my calc bandwidth map macro and those passed in bandwidth uh, values I'm calling parent bandwidth, bandwidth underscore mode, and child underscore bandwidth. And then I have just a simple conditional. So I, I say if the bandwidth mode is equal to percent, then my class bandwidth is the parent bandwidth converted to an integer with the pipe int. And I multiply it by the child bandwidth, which is, which is a percentage. So if it's if it's 30%, this will just be 30 uh, I also um, convert this to an int and I divide it by 100 and um, what I'm left with is my uh, class bandwidth in bits per second and I round that and also ensure that it's, that it's an int. And this is uh, enclosed in the w, double uh, curly braces so that, that's actual the value that is going to go into this position here in my report. So if it's not percent, then I'm working with a kilobits per second value and I just take the child uh, bandwidth amount. So that could be 3000 for 3000 kilobits per second. Again, make sure that, it, that it's an integer and multiply it by a thousand to get to bits per second and round that and make sure that the result is also an integer. And it too will go into this final position here for class bandwidth. So that's how we do macros in uh, Jinja and there's lots of different use cases that you could use where if you find that you're repeating a same the same conditional multiple times in a in a Jinja template just put it into ma into a macro and then call that uh, macro it just makes for for a uh, cleaner and easier uh, code. So that's for the gold and silver class, uh, the, the, the classes that are not class default. Uh, the other thing I do is every time I hit one of those non-default classes, I need to increment my namespace default underscore bandwidth um, variable that I declared. And here I'm just uh, calling that macro again and uh, adding the calculated bandwidth on. So if gold has got 10 meg of bandwidth, the first run it's going to be zero plus 10 meg. And if silver also has 10 meg, when I run through uh, silver, it becomes 20 meg. So I can do a calculation uh, to subtract that value from the parent class bandwidth. Uh, so then uh, I, I finished that for my two non-default classes and then my else statement will capture the default class so here um, I've calculated my, my default bandwidth. This should now be gold plus silver bandwidths in bits per, spec, bits per second. And this time I'm setting the bandwidth to be 
the parent class bandwidth, which is already in bits per second, and minusing my uh, calculated default value. And now I know what my default class uh, bandwidth in bits per second is. And now I just uh, finally, for my report, I add that namespace default um, bandwidth calcul calculated value into the last position of my report. So that's the Jinja template. So if I um, go back to my playbook, uh, go directory. And I need to um, generate this report. So uh, I just need to uncomment these tasks. So I'm using the template module. I call that a uh, ginger report in my templates directory, subdirectory of my playbook directory. And in my, uh, when I generate that report, I'm gonna create a, a file with the um, router host name in the name of the, the file. So I will create a file per router with destination. And then I'm gonna assemble with the assemble module, all of those reports, everything in the dot output folder, including my header, the AAA file that I created. And I, I'm gonna create my final report in my playbook directory called quas-report.csv. So let's run the final playbook. So it runs through um, the show runs, calling my uh, custom filter plugin again as before, displays my calculated structured quas data variables, and then uh, creates a report. So we let this run through. Now we generate the quas report and we assemble the files. So now in our output directory, we have a report for each uh, router. So if we just look at one of those, you can see that the parent map um, has its bandwidth in bits per, per second. And now we have our calculate bits per second um, uh, bandwidths for each of our classes, gold and silver, and also for our class default class. And in my uh, playbook directory, I've collated all of those into one file. And here is uh, the file with all of my routers. So if I now log into my CentOS, CentOS machine, I'll be able to open that up in LibreOffice or in Excel if you're using Windows and I just accept the default structure. And we can see now that we, uh, we have our Excel report and we can filter this, uh, just put an auto filter on. So if we wanted to look at just one of the devices, we'll pick say, I don't know, site two, router two. We can see that the parent map has got uh, 20 meg here in this instance. And if we highlight our three classes, our gold, our silver, our uh, and our bandwidth, we can see down here that the sum of that is our parent class bandwidth. So now we have successfully run a report to uh, determine what the bandwidths are uh, for each of our classes in a common value in bits per second. And you, you can then see um, it across your whole network. Uh, because a common issue that I see is that we're not sure of what's configured in the, for the quas classes on the routers, and we're not sure if it matches what was ordered for, say, an, an MPLS circuit. Uh, so that um, completes this video. I hope that was of help. Uh, I will push the uh, all of the, the playbooks, filter plugins, and Jinja templates up to GitHub if you want to have a look at it yourself. So that, that GitHub link is in the About section of my um, YouTube channel. So um, thank you very much.